Look alive. Well? Take anything good. Sure, no sweat. Grab that. Easy. Get that. I'll take care of it. Pick that up. I'll take care of it. Take that. Easy. Grab anything useful. Check it out. Yep, you got it. Look alive. What do you want?
now you're just throwing stuff away. Hey. Yeah, what is it? Take that weapon. All right.
Hey there. Thank you for your help, Initiate. We're splitting all that, right? Feral ghouls like to hide in the dark. Makes night patrol a real fright fest. Everything outside the wall ain't safe. That's just how it is. Hey, you see that big blimp? What's the Brotherhood of Steel? Why are they here? I'll meet you there then. Don't be late. Yeah, yeah, I'll be there. I just have to close up. We need to talk. Jesus, Paul. What now? It's time for you to shut up and listen, Cook. What the hell is this? And what are you doing here? Don't tell me he's hired you to help lean on me. Paul just asked me to, uh, come with him. Is that how it is? Okay. Well, I'm listening, Paul. What do you have to say this time? Just this. You leave Darcy alone, starting now, or else. Now that is a very bad idea. You don't want to pull a gun on me unless you intend to use it. But you think I won't use it? Huh? Do I just need to kill you? Is that what you're saying? Paul, put the gun away. Nobody needs to get shot here. Hey, hold on. I'm sure we can work this out. Keep talking. This is hopeless. Look, I, uh... I'll stay away from Darcy from now on. It's over. You have my word on that. Your word? What's your fucking word worth, huh? I'll make it up to you. I know a way to get a lot of money right now. You and I both know the only reason Darcy comes up here is she's pissed at you. If you were flush again, everything would be different. Besides, I owe you for what I've done. Well, what do you think? We can always kill him later, if it doesn't work out. I'm going to choose to ignore that comment. Here's the deal. I have some other um, businesses on the side. One of them is helping Nelson Latimer spend his dad's money to make himself feel like a gangster. Get to the point. Holy shit, Coke, does Malcolm know about this? What do you think? No, of course not. Anyway, that's between him and Nelson. So where was I? Oh yeah, 
me and Nelson are supposed to be meeting some gentleman from Good Neighbor to exchange Nelson's cash for their chems. My plan is simple. We take the money and the chems. I don't know. An awful lot of unknowns. Trust me, we can do this, no problem. The meeting's always in the same place. They always bring the same number of guys. They'll never know what hit them. I guess it's worth the risk. Let's do this. What do you say, Paul? Are we good? Good? Hardly. But I don't mind you helping me get rich. Hold on a minute, Cook. Yeah? What is it? Why smuggle chems into Diamond City? Chems aren't illegal here. Sure, but Mayor McDonough takes a big cut of all the chems brought into town. Not everybody thinks that's good business. That's where me and Nelson come in. He fronts the cash, I make the arrangements. Cheap chems for Diamond City. Everybody wins. Anything else? That's it. Let's go then. Now a swatter. That's a real weapon. Talk to Mo Chrome. Doctor. This better be an emergency. Yeah. See what's wrong with me, Doctor. Tell me your symptoms. I think I soaked up some rads out there. All right, let's flush your system. All done. Any other complaints? That was it. Take better care of yourself in the future, okay? Building something useful, I hope. Yes. The wall's looking as green as the day she was built. Hey. We sell everything. We're having a sale on brooms. Uh, I'll take a look. Sure.
Everyone in this city's always jumping at shadow. Chill out, is what I say. Come on, Nikki. I'm just asking for your opinion. It'd be a great quote. She's my client, Piper. Why don't you learn not to snoop on a woman's private affairs? Well, well, speak of the devil. You're back. And not with your son. What happened? I, uh... I didn't make it in time. Kellogg was working with the Institute, and he... He gave them Sean. The Institute? Oh, boy. I'm sorry, friend. Truly. That makes things considerably more complicated. He ain't kidding. Heck, Nick's a synth, and even he doesn't know how to get in. No synth does. Security protocols strip those memories out. I need to find a way. I've been investigating these creeps for over a year now. <laughs> the Commonwealth's boogeyman. Feared and hated by everyone. True enough. Sometimes they snatch people in the middle of the night. And sometimes they leave old synths behind to remind us that they're out there. But to this day, there's one thing nobody really knows. Where the Institute actually is. Or how to get in. Exactly. But there's one person who has to know, right? The guy who just handed them Sean. Kellogg. Huh. Whatever you're thinking, it doesn't matter. He's dead. Yeah. Figures the Institute's only man on the outside wouldn't be the type to be taken alive. So, a murderer and a kidnapper gets his brains blown out by an avenging parent. Huh. Be a great ending if we didn't still have the biggest mystery in the Commonwealth to solve. Doesn't matter what he knew. I'd kill him again in a heartbeat. Gets his brains blown out. Huh. His brain. You know, we may not need the man at all. You're talking crazy here, Nick. Got a fault in the old subroutines? Look, there's a place in Good Neighbor called the Memory Den. Relive the past moments in your mind as clear as the day they happened. If anyone could get a dead brain to sing, it'll be Dr. Amari, the mind behind the memories. I hope you're right, Nick. Let's see. I guess we're gonna need a piece of Kellogg's brain. Enough gray matter to bring to Amari and find out if this is going to work. Jesus, Nick. Gross. Seriously? I know it's grisly, but what choice do we have? We got no leads. Nothing. That old Merc's brain just might have all the secrets we need to know. Actually, I think I already have something. Kellogg had this... this thing attached to his head. Cybernetics, huh? We may have just won the lottery. Whether we're riding this crazy brain train or not, we can't all go running across the Commonwealth, so... Who's coming with you? I have to go to the memory den either way, if I'm gonna introduce you to Omari. But if you want to head there together, just say so. I already have someone with me. I'll meet you there, Nick. All right. See you at the den. Don't worry. We're gonna get your boy back. Just a few more steps. Uh, well, you two are out. I'm gonna do some more research. I'll be at the public if you need me. Well, there's a classic. Don't make them like they used to. Miss Perkins. I'm glad you're here. We got a new case while you and Nick were out. Ready to put on the detective hat? Tell me more. Our client is a fisherman who lives on the edge of the Commonwealth, Kenji Nakano. Mr. Nakano didn't leave many details. Said he'd go over everything when you meet him. But if you want my guess, missing person case. Guy had a worried look a mile long. I'll go check it out. Thanks, Ellie. The Nakano residence is up in the northeast, near the coast, a small fishing house. He said that he and his wife will be waiting for you.
Dad says not to talk to strangers. Nothing stays hidden forever. At least, not if I have my say. Is that a pit boy? My left arm for one of those. My friends say outside is smell, but you don't smell at all. Maybe it'd be better if we moved out of the radiation. That's hey. Hey. What's up? Hey, I never got a chance to properly thank you for helping me take out Winlock and Barnes. We're friends. No thanks necessary. Well, I wanted to say it anyway. You stuck your neck out for me. And I don't forget sh I mean, things like that. You can curse all you want. I'm not your mother. Very funny. It's not about you, it's about a promise I made. When I left the Capital Wasteland, I didn't just leave little Lamplight behind. I left my family behind. Had a beautiful wife named Lucy. And a son we named Duncan. He's the one I made my promise to. The promise to clean up my act and to be a better person. I guess that sounds pretty stupid coming from a guy who shoots people for a living. I don't know what to say. Sure you do. You want to tell me how cruel it was to leave them behind. My son. He's sick. I, I, I don't know what's wrong with him. One day, he's playing out in the fields behind our farm. The next, he took a fever and these blue boils popped up all over his body. Last I saw, he was almost too weak to walk. I didn't dare ask him to come with me. Honestly, I don't know how much longer he's going to last. Maybe you should find a doctor. Every doctor I've talked to is worthless. They never even heard of the disease. I don't need them. I need someone like you. Look, you've already done so much for me. I feel horrible asking for more. But if you're willing to risk it, I might have a way we could save him. Of course I'll help. Count me in. I was hoping you'd say that. A few months before we met, I bumped into a guy named Sinclair who claimed his buddy caught some kind of disease. I thought he was wasting my time until he said his partner broke out in blue boils. They dug up information about a cure at a place called MedTech Research. They even managed to grab the building's lockdown security codes. Unfortunately, Sinclair's buddy died before they were able to break into the facility. I mean, there's no way that's a coincidence, right? MedTech has to be the place. Don't give up hope. If there's a cure, we'll find it. Thanks, partner. I'll put MedTech Research on your map. When you're ready, just take us out there. I have all the codes we need to get through their security. What you're doing... No one's ever cared that much about me before. Even if it takes me the rest of my life. I'll repay this debt to you. I swear it. <laughs>